Respectfully, Director, it was not the special counsel's job to conclusively determine Donald Trump's innocence or to exonerate him because the bedrock principle of our justice system is a presumption of innocence. It exists for everyone. Everyone is entitled to it, including sitting presidents. And because there is a presumption of innocence, prosecutors never, ever need to conclusively determine it. Donald Trump is not above the law. He's not. But he damn sure shouldn't be below the law. My next guest was one of the Republicans who questioned Robert Mueller last week. There he was on whether the Russia investigation was fueled by an anti-Trump bias, period. Let's bring in Republican Congressman from Texas, John Ratcliffe. He's a member of the House Judiciary, Intelligence, and Homeland Security Committees. He's also a former federal prosecutor. Congressman, it's good to have you this morning. Thanks so much for joining me. Good morning, Maria. You good zeroed you. in on exonerate because the special counsel said we could not exonerate the president. Why was that line of questioning important? Well, Maria, the Democrats built their entire strategy around the special counsel's statement that Donald Trump could not be exonerated from potential obstruction of justice crimes. But what the Democrats and the special counsel didn't see was the fatal uh, defect in that legal reasoning, that by requiring Donald Trump to conclusively prove his innocence, they were depriving him of the one thing no one can be deprived of, which is a presumption of innocence. And getting the special counsel to admit that they applied a one-of-a-kind, made-for-Donald-Trump-only standard um, to these facts really rocked the foundation of their entire obstruction of justice analysis. At the end of the day, you can't impeach somebody over obstruction of justice where you use the wrong legal standard, a legal standard that doesn't exist. So do you uh, think... It seemed like that was... Do you think you've popped the impeachment bubble? I think everybody saw, and a lot of Democrats have, have conceded that it's time to move on, that there's a hole in the impeachment balloon that's large enough for Jerry Nadler and uh, Adam Schiff to walk through together. Um, but Schiff and Nadler don't seem to see that. Um, you know, the same folks that promised that there was going to be uh, impeachment by collusion, um, you know, that died when the Mueller report came out and said there was no collusion or conspiracy. Then they shifted to it was going to be impeachment by obstruction of justice, that Robert Mueller was going to breathe life into uh, the report. Instead, he sucked the life out of it by, again, applying a, a legal standard that didn't exist. So now they're moving on saying they want to pursue obstruction by uh, the court system and trying to get grand jury information. Look, it's, 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 it's becoming a joke. I think people see that. And Nadler and Schiff are starting to look more like Laurel and Hardy. It's time to move on. Well, what is your reaction overall? I mean, uh, Congressman, if there's one question that I've been asking this entire two-year period, it's this. How is it possible that the Mueller report, the Mueller investigation is going to have any credibility at all? If Robert Mueller does not look at the origins of the investigation, if he does not look at specifically why, why am I looking at Trump being involved in Russia meddling? We know Russia has meddled for decades. Why is Trump part of this? So I ask you, your reaction right. to the fact that Mueller said he doesn't have, he's not familiar with Fusion GPS. It's not in his purview. How, how can that fly? Of course it can't. Uh, Trey Gowdy said it best this week. Uh, the person who learned the most about the Mueller report during Wednesday's hearings was Robert Mueller. And that's sad but true. And really what it meant is that the Mueller report and its conclusions weren't from Robert Mueller. They were written by what a lot of people believe was Hillary Clinton's de facto legal team, people that had supported her, um, even represented some of her aides. And so um, the Mueller report, it's really going to be difficult for the Democrats or anyone to rely upon the findings of a report when they just listen uh, to the man whose name was on top of it not have a command of what was even in it. So, I mean, the fact that you did have others writing the report and now we see that, do you think people understand that? Andrew Weissman was what, a, a Hillary Clinton donor? He was at her election party, right? It's not just Andrew Weissman. Um, uh, Aaron Zebley represented Hillary Clinton's aide that set up the unsecure server and smashed her blackberries with, uh, with a hammer. Um, there were all sorts of folks, uh, again, that were close to the Clinton uh, Foundation. And, uh, you know, so the bias that was involved there, I think, 
uh, are fair things to talk about, and I think that's why that, in light of the disastrous testimony from, from Robert Mueller, you know, the Democrats paid a heavy price for bringing a reluctant witness to testify. Um, they overplayed their hand, and, the, and they did it in front of the American people on a national uh, television audience, and it was just a train wreck of a week for the Democrats, and it was a great week for Donald Trump because of that. But to your point, Maria, now the things that, that Bob Mueller said he didn't know about and his team clearly didn't look at, um, those are things that would be fair for Bill Barr and the Department of Justice to look at, um, because we know Right. that um, things happened in the Obama administration uh, that haven't been answered. There's been no accountability for that yet. That's what I want to talk about. Let's take a short break, and I want to ask you where the crime and the wrongdoing really was, because we know that Barr is looking at it, and John Durham is looking at it, and the IG, along with Senator Lindsey Graham.